Hello and welcome back to Car Rental University. I'm your host, Alex Witherow. Today I'm going to talk about if you're going to insure your car uh, with one of the traditional car insurance companies for car share, how to have the conversation with them. Before I get into that, click below, grab the five things you must do before starting a car rental business. Lots of great information out there. So, you know, I, I've had a few conversations with, with you and look, I know that insuring cars for car share is the perennial confusion and question. Um, I cover this a lot in my course uh, to make sure, pr probably the most common mistake I see with people is that they actually over insure the car and they spend too much money on insurance. So if you're gonna call up your traditional, you know, company, say like Geico, Progressive, State Farm, whatever, okay? And let's say your goal is to uh, insure the car for, you know, car share. So theoretically, when you are insuring that car, so let's, let's break this down the way claims adjusters see this whole scenario, okay? So you have the car when it is just sitting, you know, on the block or in your parking lot, right? And then you have when somebody gets into the car and takes it for a drive, if there's Uber involved, you know, when the app is on, uh, when, you know, uh, there's a ride that is booked and when there's somebody in the car, those are all different classifications and periods in terms of how claims adjusters see, uh, you know, <clears throat> any kind of situation and how, you know, who, who is responsible for what. So that said, okay, so when you have a car and you want to put it on car share and let's say get around or Turo, a renter from one of those two places, you know, rents the car. When, when they rent that car, it goes on, you know, if a get around renter rents a car, your car, it goes, as soon as they get in the car, that goes on to get arounds insurance. Same thing for Turo. Now you're probably wondering, what do I do with the car when it is just sitting there on the street and how do I have this conversation with my insurance company? So theoretically, when that car is just sitting on the street, you only need to cover it for liability unless you are driving it yourself, okay? So if you are driving it yourself for personal uses, then yes, you need full coverage. So you need liability and collision, all right? So um, in that scenario, if you are using the car for personal use, you will need to give the car full coverage, uh, which, you know, sometimes we do that. Sometimes we put cars on the sh car share platform just to pay off the note, maybe. And then the rest of the time we use it to, you know, drive for ourselves. If that's the case, then yes, you need to uh, fully insure the car. Now, if you want to use your insurance company and just uh, for that car, but it's just being used for car share, you put the car on the street, and you just need liability insurance for that car when it's just sitting there on the street or in your parking lot, you know, you're, you're in your driveway, whatever. So when you talk to the insurance company and you're saying to them, hey, I, you know, I'm trying to, you, you know, insure this car for this unique use case. Now, I will tell you, if you say the words car share or get around or Turo or renting my car or hire a car or whatever. You use any of those buzzwords with those guys and they'll flip out. Seriously, they'll flip out. They freak out. So, you know, they don't want any of their cars on any of those platforms whatsoever. Now, can they control that? No. Um, they all know that it probably happens a fair amount. Um, so, you know, that said, so, you know, if you call them up and you're saying, hey, I'm gonna, I wanna put my car and get around, Wrong way to start that conversation because they'll say no, no, no. They'll send you like a letter demanding that you never do anything like that ever again, and you know don't even say those words. And you know we may drop you, we may drop you from this this whole company and, and the coverage altogether. That can happen, frankly. Um, I've seen it happen with other people. So you have to be very careful in terms of how you talk to insurance companies. So really, all you got to say is this: you go say, look, I have this card. It's sitting in my driveway and I need to insure it just for that. And they'll probably say, well, you know, a liability policy would cover you for that. So the reason why you say just that is because legally in terms of how they're going to um, cover the car, that is all they are responsible for is when that car is just sitting there because as soon as it gets rented, it goes on to get around in Turo's insurance. 
So when it goes to get around insurance, if there's an incident with the car, get around covers that. Only get around needs to know about that, you know, because get around's the one in charge of that. So, you know, <clears throat> the only time you need to file a claim, like let's say you're with State Farm or whatever, you know, the only time you need to talk to State Farm about <clears throat> a claim is if something happens to that car while it's just sitting in your driveway or sitting on the street, whatever. When it is just, so, so you have to think that the period in which they are responsible for insurance is when that car is sitting, and then the period in which it's rented is belongs to get around or Turo. And then if there is a <clears throat> incident, you talk to the corresponding company that is responsible for uh, the insurance during either period, okay? So like I said, you don't wanna mention anything about car share, rentals, whatever, they flip out when you say anything like that. And frankly, um, I, I just, you know, I don't, I, I think it's better to stay away from the traditional, those traditional um, companies when it comes to car share, because it's just a little riskier with them. Because if they find out somehow that, you know, you are using the car for car share, they probably will drop the insurance, even if it's not even being used for that. They're just weird like that, frankly. I just, you know, they are strange. But, you know, you have companies like ABI with Period X, you have GMI, you have Lula. Now, you know, we, we, we've got, you know, more and more options that are coming out that can handle this type of thing. So, um, you know, so all that to say, um, when you are dealing with a traditional insurance company, they are tricky to talk to. Um, they have all kinds of little exemptions that nobody knows about. So, you know, <laughs> do you want to hire me to talk to your insurance company? I will. Uh, but, you know, all that to say, it, it's... Um, you just have to be very tricky with them because there's certain keywords and buzzwords that flip them out and make them, you know, freak out. But by law, they can, you know, you can legally get uh, a liability policy for the car when it's just sitting on the street. Um, and then, you know, when it gets rented by Get Around or Turo, you know, the, their insurance will pick it up and it doesn't concern the other uh, company. So all that to say, I know, you know, this, this uh, insurance situation can be complicated and confusing. Um, I talk a lot about this in my course and how not to overinsure and how to do it just right. Um, all that to say, uh, before I go, click below, grab the five things you must do before starting a car rental business, and I will catch you in the next episode. Thank you.